lots of experience all in retail uh, and in uh, fulfillment and supply chain area uh, i have worked extensively in oms uh, both sterling that's a ibm product and manhattan and some custom oms as well currently building a custom oms for one of a, a home improvement retailer uh, and have worked in wms manhattan mainly and a bit of sterling uh, which is very rarely used now uh, and have worked on a custom wms for walmart where we implemented a custom wms we built a custom wms from scratch for walmart uh, have visited couple of uh, facilities of walmart and some other warehouses as well in us uh, that's about me uh, let's jump in uh, before i mean let's make this session interactive okay i don't want just to be me talking and you listening right so let's make it interactive you ask questions i'll ask questions right uh, and that way we can make it two way communication right rather than having just me speaking and you getting bored so let me ask you a question right what what do we understand with warehouse management anybody any guess any any answer is fine i mean some of you have already worked on it so probably you can answer better but no no answer is a wrong answer right can somebody yeah. define what is warehouse management yeah to me sadik this right yeah. to me it is pick pack and ship that's all correct okay pick pack and ship okay before that you don't want to receive <laughs> Yeah, receiving is uh, a different part. <laughs> yeah, that is also part of. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, that I mean, you're just talking about outbound activities. So there's something called inbound activities, and there's something called outbound activities, and then there is QA activities, and there's a lot of other activities. We're going to see all of that. Okay. Any other uh, any other answer? Uh, that's a good answer. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm on this side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, warehouse management is an overall uh, management of inbound and outbound activity, which uh -huh. is. Uh, which is totally means uh, it is uh, based on uh, number of uh, uh, our number of shipments which we are receiving in inbound mm -hmm. and then we are lo locating it uh, as per the bin location and then uh, processing it for dispatch as per the customer request so it is a management activity for inbound and outbound both sure okay good yeah. any one more answer yeah imtiaz this side Mm -hmm. uh regarding i have experience with amazon fulfillment center wow. where we used to where we used to send our products uh, from our store to our temporary store in fulfillment center mm -hmm. after inbound we will get a update the quantities has been received in the center mm -hmm. then once the order comes they will fulfill the order and they will ship from their main warehouse yeah sure okay yeah i think yeah almost Uh, everybody covered it pretty much, right? So warehouse is basically used to store items, store your inventory, right? Because uh, you need it when either a customer places your order or your stores need it, right? There are two types of warehouses basically. One is which serve the customers based on the dot com orders, right? Or any kind of any from any channel you capture an order. If you want to fulfill that, you need to have a warehouse. Or I mean, some retailers use the stores also as warehouse, but that's a different category. But mostly warehouses are used. to store inventory in a optimal way right you don't want to store more or you don't want to store less you want to have the right amount of inventory to serve your customers the customer either it's customers or your stores right for example walmart has uh, dedicated uh, warehouses just for stores right because they have 10000 plus stores in us and much more now right how do they serve the stores right? because stores cannot have all the inventory so that's why they have huge warehouses right so some of the warehouses is as big as the manyata tech park here right more than half a kilometer of the site okay so huge right they keep the inventory and make it available when it is needed right the four piece of the product right the product place price and promotion right so how do we get that product uh, to the right place at the right time that is what the warehouses serve okay so let's jump on to the okay uh, agenda right so we're going to cover what is introduction to warehouse uh, then uh get into the activities right what happens in a warehouse uh, inbound activities we're going to see that in detail uh, outbound activities right what happens there and there is uh, quality assurance activities another important aspect of a warehouse uh, right and at the end we're going to see wms uh, solution landscape right uh, what are the different uh, uh, application a warehouse usually integrates with and what are the who are the market leaders in this area so we're going to see that okay Uh, what are the options and consideration at the end we have qa and you can ask questions any time okay don't uh, hesitate to ask any question okay any time okay with that uh, let's get on you guys can see my screen clearly right no issues 
Yes, you can see it. Okay. I don't know why this is coming. Okay, ठीक है. So uh, just the definition of it, right? Uh, whereas management it describes the set of activities, right, uh, to ensure the most effective movement of money. As I said, right, it is. to make sure that the inventory movement happens right you don't have warehouse just to store inventory right that is not the purpose of it right you because you don't want to uh, keep your inventory idle as well right just get the inventory right amount of inventory keep it in the warehouse and keep moving it right keep moving it you don't want to keep it forever right but you want but you still want to have the right amount of inventory in optimized manner right and then effective movement of that inventory out of the warehouse so that is what uh, is warehouse used for okay so uh, let's look at what are the different channels a warehouse serves okay so as i said there are two types of usually warehouse one is dot com warehouse which is solely used for fulfilling the customer orders right now with covid right lot of people are buying online right almost every people stopped going to stores especially in us and even in india as well right so these dot com retailers had huge sales right and they had to keep the right amount of inventory and with the covid restrictions it was very very difficult right lot of retailers face a lot of issues right i mean some of them uh, were not doing good some of them were do, like especially grocery and home improvements in us did a lot much better than what they usually do during april may right but whereas high end retailers like specialty retailers didn't do that much good okay so uh, different channels right so dot com uh, warehouse usually serves dot com channel these are different channels right mobile right if you're placing order through mobile call center if somebody is calling up and placing your order and kiosk if somebody is placing your order from through a kiosk so the dot com warehouse serves these kind these uh, usually these four channels okay and then they have retail warehouse which mostly serves the stores right for example if a retailer has a stores it could be walmart it could be big bazaar in india right uh, it could be more 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 that also uh, has stores right so these retail warehouses usually serve stores and these orders are in bulk okay this is not like a customer order where you place a order for one or two items this will be huge in bulk okay say i want to buy 50 buckets i want to buy 50 uh, say what footballs right so those kind of orders these warehouses get and they fulfill it sometimes some of these warehouses have dedicated uh, doors for each store right this this door serves only this store like that okay and some of the warehouses have like 100 plus doors so they are, they have dedicated time slot for this store okay this is the door that will be allocated and you're going to serve only this store right so uh, some retailers have common warehouses as i said right some people have common warehouse uh, but it's difficult to maintain if you have a common warehouse right because uh, you want to maintain the inventory differently what you sell in dot com may not be the same that you're going to sell in store right it could be different so usually people have different warehouses but some people have same warehouse but different locations within the warehouse but i've heard a new concept now where there is no difference also it's one retailer called pandora is serving from the same inventory for dot com as well as stores it is very difficult and challenging to maintain but some people do some people are even trying that okay so on the right side usually uh, this is how a, a warehouse operation i mean basically there is a whole uh, kind of chain of uh, action that would happen right a customer come coming and placing your order right uh, that's your to the customer side and you have the oms the order management system that gets the that order the customer order and it sends it to the warehouse right uh, and once it comes and you kind of do the activities all the activities pick pack and ship and then it goes to the customer if it is a store order basically uh, that order is shipped to the store any questions on the introduction and what is the high level usage of warehouse it it's also called distribution center okay don't get confused though. okay they they usually call there's a slight difference but let's not get into it warehouse and dc are interchangeably used no okay. okay so let's get into the first activity inbound activities okay so what happens in the inbound okay uh, there is something called pre receiving that happens right before uh, the inventory before the items can come from the supplier you need to place a purchase order there is something concept called purchase order say for example if you want to buy 10 items a b c d up to 10 items right and you place the order for that say i want a 50 b 30 c 40 something like that right so you're going to place that order so that supplier right maybe supplier z right so he says that okay i don't have a Uh, 50 that you had order i'm going to give you 40 right so he's going to some, send something called asn advance shipment notice okay it's a very common term almost everybody uses it okay so he's going to send a asn and that tells that okay you asked for these 10 items i have only um, i have i don't have all of uh, i have maybe all the 10 items but i don't have the right quantities you asked for so 
So I'm going to send this. Okay. So based on that, you uh, do scheduling of that. Okay. You schedule that uh, uh, inbound and be ready for that. Right. That is what happens in pre-receiving. There is a person who will be looking at the ASN and preparing it and allocating a time for the trailer to come so that you can have that assigned to the particular door. So all that happens. Okay. In pre-receiving. So during receiving, right, based on that ASN, the actual truck comes, right? Uh, do, do, I mean, there is a time allocated. It's very, very important that these people follow time. In US, I mean, I've worked in Walmart where, so a time is allocated for a trailer. Trailer is a huge truck that comes from the suppliers, okay? So there, there's a time given. If it is say 1 p.m., right? You have time from 1 to 1.30 p.m. If you don't come in that time, you have to go and wait in the yard for maybe eight hours or, or the next day. So you have to come in that time and just report to the, the receiving clerk, right, who will be there in the warehouse, and then he's going to tell you that, okay, go and assign it to the particular door, right? So that's what happened in receiving. So it is assigned to the door, and the freight that would have come in that um, trailer is unloaded, okay? It's it's kept in the receiving area. It's just kept. Nothing is done. Just so a forklift, okay, you see a forklift here, right, on the right side. Something fork like forklift goes and just takes every item in that trailer and puts it, okay? So those, those would have mostly come in the pallets. So this is what is the pallet, okay? So you unload the pallets and keep it in the receiving area. The receiving area is not yet started. You just emptied your trailer, okay? And then after this, right, I mean, you're gonna start receiving and uh, based on what kind of items they are, right? Whether it's a multi skew receiving or single skew receiving, we're gonna see all that in the later slides. Don't worry about it, right? And you, after, the, after the receiving is done and receiving tickets are printed, and you start the hauling, okay? That is uh, just moving the inventory into the warehouse. Hauling and put away process, okay? So post receiving, what happens, right? Uh, this is, uh, say, as I said that uh, you had ordered 10 items, right? And that person uh, had told that I'm gonna give those 10 items with particular quantity, right? But you have to match those, right? I mean, the driver would have come with a uh, slip that will tell that, okay, I had brought uh, 30 items of fee, right? You have to make sure that you get 30 items, right? So there could be overages, there could be shortages, there could be damages, right? So all of that has to be uh, accounted for and uh, you kind of calculate that, right? If some quality check needs to be done, all of that, you need to keep that inventory separately, right? That is what happens in the post receipt, okay? A any questions, please stop me, okay? Uh, so this is a more pictorial uh, uh, way of showing what happens, right? As I said, uh, appointment is created. Okay, the scheduler uh, is crea uh, creates that appointment. Okay, uh, delivery and appointment is created in the BMS. The, the delivery arrives at the DC, right? DC the warehouse. The traffic officer kind of verifies paperwork, makes sure that whatever you had received in ASN is what the driver has got. Okay, at least in the paper, right? I mean, you still not looked at the inventory, but you want to make sure that whatever uh, ASN we had got uh, that matches with the paper that the driver has got. Okay? Uh, trailer, uh, the trailer is spotted to receiving door and is now ready for unloading and receipt. So this is how a door looks like. Okay, If anybody has not seen a warehouse door, this is how it looks like. And this is how you put the trailer there. Okay. Uh, so continued uh, with more pictorial um, representation. Okay. Trailer arrives and assigned to the door. Okay. The freight is unloaded and staged for receipt, right? You just took all the inventory out. Uh, this came in this way, right? With the pallets, you just put it there, okay? And then <laughs> items received using, uh, generated uh, by generating the receiving tax, okay? So you need to have a system, right? Where you can uh, kind of generate the receiving tax so that the items can be uh, put away or hauled into your warehouse, within the, uh, to the warehouse, okay? Uh, the different types of receiving, multi skew pallet, okay? Split pallet receiving. So what it means is you can receive multiple items on a single pallet, right? Item A, B, you can receive on a single pallet, right? Uh, depends on how big is the item, okay? So that means that item A and B can be put on one same same pallet. Another one is SSTK receiving when vendor pack or each EOM. So vendor pack is how the vendor had sent, right? In that way, right? This is mostly for smaller items. They sell, they kind of send it in uh, a pack, right? A pack would have like 10 items or 20 items, right? Uh, then there are some items which are bulky, which come as single, each each uh, unit of measure, okay? Some items could be like a big um, washing machine or fridge, right? They come as a single unit. So you're going to receive that way. Uh, so if there are some new items that come in, right, that were not there in the system, you can set it up during the receiving, right? New item setup. So that option also a warehouse should have, right? I mean, you received the item, you didn't have that in your inventory. So you should be able to um, set that up, okay? 
uh, UPC verification, make sure, making sure that the UPC, everything that we have, it matches, right? And then uh, slot away is, uh, slot away, the auto and manual is generated by this, okay? Slot away is basically uh, moving that uh, inventory to the uh, warehouse, inside the warehouse, okay? Uh, this is what happens. You kind of uh, print the receipt tags for each of the item and scan and pallets are hauled to drop location. And from there, you're gonna go it and store it in your warehouse. Okay. Uh, slot away is put away, right? Yeah, slot away is put away. That's right. right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, as I said, we're going to see single skew pallet receiving. As I said, uh, in this process, single items are received on pallets and then slotted to the destined slots. So, there's something called prime and reserve slots. Okay. So, prime slots are where from where the picking happens. Okay. There are two types of slots. Slots is basically nothing but a, a place where you store within the warehouse. Okay. So for example, I'll show you this quickly, right? So this, this usually, uh, my, okay. So this could be the prime. Okay. Can you get, you can see right where I'm moving the arrow. So this could be the prime because this is where the picking happens. This could be the reserve. Okay. This is one example, but there are a lot other ways you keep primes and reserve. So this hole could be prime and you might have a reserve in a different location. Some retailers do that. Some retailers usually what they do is they keep the prime in the lower uh, area and the above ones are the reserve. So basically when the inventory comes, they put it here. Right. And then they replenish from here to here. Replenish means from reserve to prime, they move it later when needed. Okay. So this is where this is the prime and this is the reserve. So from picking happens from the prime usually. Okay. Some people sometimes it happens in reserve also in very rare cases. Okay. So moving on. Um, so as I said, single uh, single skew pallet receiving. Okay. Uh, it's all the all the same type of items received on a pallet. So multi skew pallet receiving, as I said, you can have multiple items received in a pallet. This is again where the reserves or primes are shared with different uh, uh, items, okay? Sometimes uh, you keep multiple items on a reserve as well. That is also possible, okay? When you don't have space, right? Or when uh, the items are not very costly, you, it's okay to keep them together, okay? But you need to have the system to kind of manage that, okay? That you have two item A and item B in the same reserve. It's more confusing actually for picking and all. Okay, assortment freight receiving. Uh, it's a different kind of item. Okay, where uh, example for this is uh, you have uh, a pack of doll, uh, six dolls with different colors. So that the pack is called the parent item and the individual dolls is called a child item. So assortment receiving is a little difficult in warehouse management. Okay, so you need to have special uh, kind of uh, technique for that. Okay, how do you receive sort? When you get a, when you get a uh, uh, parent item, how do you receive it? When you get a child item, how do you receive it? So all that is sorted out here, okay? Uh, problem freight receiving, okay? This is when you see that something is damaged, right? How do you kind of manage that, right? Something is damaged or it gets damaged while receiving, right? How do you manage that? You usually move it to a quality assurance area, keep it, keep it there and there is a separate group in the warehouse called quality group, uh, which QA group, right? Which kind, kind of comes and decides what to do with that. Whether it's a return, do we return it? Or if it is our issue, right, how do you manage that, right? Whether you want to sell it or you don't want to sell it, you want to maybe uh, just gift it to somebody, right? Charity, all of that is decided with that. Okay. Any questions in receiving? Is it clear? Uh, sorry, this is right. Uh, how to uh, handle the uh, lot controlling it's... Uh, while receiving? Uh, can, you, can you give the context? Let's say I'm uh, I'm receiving uh, trailers, mm -hmm. okay, and I want to uh, implement lot controlling. At what stage I can go for lot controlling? And lot number, batch number, basically. It it it, ha it happens during receiving only, right? I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, what what do you mean by lot? I mean, lot is uh, uh, is it lot? You know, lot means batching. Uh, I want to have a separate batch or lot controlling when a, a pallet or item batch is receiving in my inventory. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, no, no I, I get your point. Uh, mm -hmm. See, the, it, it all happens, I mean, de depending on what software, whether it's using Manhattan, whether you're using JDA, right? So it will have that capability, right? I mean, when you receive it, uh, I mean, see, a lot of things happen during receiving, right? If, I mean, you might probably want to do uh, separate quality. So for example, if you're buying iPhones, right? So that has a different way of receiving. You want to kind of quality check every single piece, right? And if you're buying, say, if you're kind of uh, ordered for medicine, right? That needs uh -huh. uh, maybe expiry check as well, right? So all okay. of that 
all of that needs to be done um, mm-hmm. uh, right uh, i don't I, i mean i don't know if i answer your thing right but but so when you receive it you kind of mm-hmm. generate the uh, receiving tax right so that will okay. have all the number where so for example say if you received a pallet right so item mm-hmm. a and if it needs to be uh, slotted to say some reserve um, x right reserve location x right so that mm-hmm. that tag will tell you right so i received say 40 items of item a right mm-hmm. and uh, uh, that needs to be hauled away to that uh, reserve location x right and if there is any quality mm-hmm. check needs to be done or anything needs to be done that all mm-hmm. has to be done before that okay okay currently is uh, what is our requirement is currently we are looking for a lot controlling means mm-hmm. when we receive any uh, pallet we will uh, name it we will lot controlling it mm-hmm. and then while ordering anything Mm-hmm. the uh, system has to be uh, tell which lot i need to be shipped first oh, okay 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 probably uh, first in first out something like that doesn't right right, right before and right, yeah. yeah yeah so, so okay. yeah, i yeah, need to understand when we can yeah that when is while we can receiving, yeah that is yeah. during receiving only you should do it right if you want to okay. follow, if you want to follow that logic so that mm-hmm. that that usually happens for medicines and all as i give example right so okay. because you want to kind of fulfill um, the medicines which are kind of expiring earlier right so you you will allocate a lot for that for example i received a medicine today that has a expiry of say may to 2021 right so you want to allo- allocate a lot for that say lot number 1 okay so you get another medicine which is maybe june of 2021 right so you want to probably allocate lot number 2 i'm just giving an example just making up an example okay so when you receive your order so you should make sure that you take items from lot 1 Yeah, doesn't make sense. Yeah. So while receiving only, it has to happen. So probably it's a customer. Uh, maybe Manhattan has this concept. I'm not pretty sure about it, but it could be a customization that you have to do for any package solution. Or if all you're right. building custom, yeah, you need to kind of have it. it. This all has to happen during receiving only. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think the uh, the earpiece will have this inbuilt functionality for the flood control. Like Oracle already has uh, this kind of concept. wherein the items are tracked from the receiving till they get sold from your order management system yeah okay good 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 question this is good i mean this will help others as well thank you for asking question if if i cannot answer i'll probably try to get you the answer okay but i think it's good that we have some people who have worked on it so maybe others can also answer okay i i'll not be right always okay <laughs> okay so any other questions I mean, for people who are new is it uh, is it too complex or is it okay you people understand i'm going to show a video at the end as well that will make it more clear uh, is it fine for people who are new first time hearing all of these concepts it's good enough <clears throat> good enough okay okay so outbound activities right so you kind of receive those um, inventory right and you slotted and put away in your reserve locations mostly reserve sometimes you i have a question what kind of uh, skill sets is required for doing customization using this uh, erp shams bhai we are not able to hear you Looks like some network issue transfer. Uh, let, let's wait uh, for him to resolve the network issue. Hello, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Hey, can you still see my screen as well? No screen. Uh... no uh, your screen is not there but you can hear it okay okay looks like my i had some network glitch because of that i think it's gone okay i'm going to try to reshare again uh i share kidare i okay share screen okay i'm going to go again 
you people can see it now yeah it's visible now okay sure sure um so order processing involves downloading of orders from the oms uh, right um, where you have a order management system uh, that has uh, orders from the customers right you download them and do pre allocating and allocating so basically pre allocation is uh, you have uh, you kind of while downloading you see how much inventory i have so you're going to do pre allocation then you do allocation during cycle wave there's something all we're going to talk about later right so allocating them based on the availability of the items right uh, so you should have the capability of back ordering it back ordering means uh, you got a order and you don't have the inventory in the warehouse you need to back order back order means you're going to Uh, either send it to a different warehouse, or if you don't have inventory anywhere, you probably so that OMS is going to decide whether to cancel that order or to reship that order to a different warehouse. Okay, so you're going to basically back order means you're going to tell that I don't have this inventory. Okay, uh, reshop is kind of send it to some other warehouse. Okay, a uh, cycle wave. Okay, this is a very very important concept of a warehouse, right? Where you going to run run a wave okay this is called cycle wave concept okay where you going to uh, basically create a uh, uh, kind of uh, do do proper allocation here uh, right there is a lot of factors that are considered here what is the level of service right whether it's next day same day maybe it's a ground shipping right if it is so based on that the orders get allocated in this way okay uh, it could be some other um, criteria like ship as is ship alone right there are some items that you cannot ship with others there are some item that you're going to ship alone right for example a refrigerator you cannot ship anything with that right or, or can you consolidate more items right if a customer has ordered say a shoes and a pen right or maybe something like that right a shoes and a watch probably you can consolidate and send it together right but if it is some item that you cannot consolidate i mean you cannot put it together you're going to send uh, ship it separately so based on that the wave is run and that basically generates the pick right picks right where uh if warehouse person can go and pick it okay so cycle wave generates the pick slips okay we're going to see what are the different types of picks later in the slide right it, it usually it, what it does is so you, you run your wave right it looks at inventory allocates it and generates the picks right uh, from where uh, the those items for those orders can be picked okay uh it also generates replenishment right for example say i have a order for uh, item a with 10 items but my prime has only 8 items right so it usually generates replenishment replenishment is from your reserve so you're going to maybe create a uh, uh, task to maybe move some uh, 10 or 20 items to the prime so that you have enough items to be picked up from the prime slot okay uh cartonization so this only generates the logic for cartonization what is cartonization is how many items you can put in a box right and what is the right box size to use for the packing that uh, that item and this is this is one of the most complex logic a warehouse has okay using the right type of box right i mean usually see in india i mean especially even even amazon has a horrible cartonization logic in india this they kind of ship small items with huge boxes you might have noticed it i don't know if anybody has noticed that sometimes what happens is that you get a big box but the item is very small that is the wrong cartonization logic okay so what the what the best cartonization logic is the right box type for the item okay and if it is multiple items which which box to use because you're going to save on the box uh, cost also you're going to save on the shipping also for example say if you have uh, customized order for five items and if you're using five different boxes it's going to cost you for boxes and also it's going to cost you for the shipping right so you have to kind of minimize the number of boxes so that uh, you save on both shipping as well as the box uh, cost okay uh order types right customer orders as i said in the beginning right uh, site to store means uh, that is uh, the store orders exit orders is usually something that you kind of are uh, giving it to charity or returning it back so those are called exit orders okay that is not to the customer not to the stores this is to third category it could be returning back to the vendor or it could be charity or gifting somebody those are called exit orders so these are three types of orders that you might get from your order management system and you can fulfill it accordingly okay uh, some picture representation okay so oms sends it you download that order pre allocate and allocate uh, and run the cycle wave uh, run the cartonization logic right create picks and generate trips uh, create replenishment okay and uh, post production reports so reports are generated here i mean everywhere reports are generated we don't have to okay so next is order filling right uh, how do we so you got the order right you created the picks right how do we fulfill that how do we fill that order right uh, uh this is the logic uh, so this is again very complex logic right what is the route that picker should take right so 
uh, that person will not go and just pick one order. He might have say fifty orders to pick in one route he's going to take, right? Or one uh, one kind of track he's going to take, right? So which is the best way, right? Whether he has to go from one side, whether he has to go zigzag, whether he has to go from one look. How how does he travel, right? I mean, because again, right, you want to save time and you don't want that person to get tired as well, right? You you want to make sure that you have the right amount of picking in that one round he's going to hit, right? So there's a lot of logic. Again, it's a very, very complex logic, right? What is the best way to go and pick? Okay. Uh, types of order picking, right? There are four or five types. I've covered four or four order picking techniques here. RF or RF order picking, where you have a RF handle device that will tell, right? Go to the slot, pick these many items, right? For example, go to slot A, pick five items. Okay. So he goes to slot A. He sees that only there are three items, so he can tell that two are short. That means I don't have two items. If he finds all five, he's gonna pick all five. So if he goes there, sees four, one is damaged, so he's gonna say that I'm gonna only pick four, right? So that is what is done in that captured in that. Again, that RF gun will tell that okay, go to slot C, pick up three items, right? That is that basically the device advises him and guides him to where to go, pick how much. Okay, he'll go and scan that RF gun to that slot. So the slot also will have a label. So he'll Scan it and it will tell how much to pick from there. Okay, so this is the most commonly used picking method. Uh, the other method is voice order picking, where you will be wearing a voice device that will tell go to slot D, pick up five. He'll go to slot D and uh, say pick up five and say he has to say okay I picked up five, just five, right? And then it is fine. If he says four, then it will ask whether it's short. So you're gonna say that it's short. So one one item gets shorted. Okay. So like that, voice picking is done. It's very fun. I've done testing with voice picking. It's very fun to uh, kind of do voice picking. Okay, you have to train that voice device. Like especially with our accent, it's a little difficult. You have to train that device for half an hour, and then it will pick up your voice. We couldn't hear your voice. Oh, you can't. You couldn't hear my voice for the voice picking. <laughs> Can you hear now? Hello. Yes, yes comes away. We are here. We but somebody. Okay, right at the time of voice picking, my voice went off, is it? <laughs> okay, sure. Um, wh whoever said couldn't hear, did they get it, or you want me to repeat it? No, we are able to hear you. Okay, great. So yeah, voice voice order picking. I said it's fun. Okay, uh, it's it's uh, this is also used widely. Okay, for picking. Um, Pick by label. So this is where um, I mean, like receiving labels, picking labels also get generated along while you're doing the cycle wave, right? So the labels are generated. So the person who is picking looks at the label. So it will tell, okay, go to some slot, pick up these many items. He'll look at the label. This is this is like little like manual. So you don't have a device where you can enter uh, something. So he'll go with that label and pick up those items and bring. The last method is pick by list. This is where it's all manual. You don't have you don't have picking label. You don't have RF device. You don't have voice. Okay, so this is pick by list where a person. This usually happens in a small warehouse where you don't have any automation or you don't have any system, right? Where you know you are listed down what items to pick from where. You will go with the list and mark keep marking. Okay, I picked up this many. So there is any shortage, you're gonna write it manually and do the picking. Okay. Any questions on? Order picking. So this is all what I'm talking about is a manual where a human person, human goes and picks up. So a lot of automation is done in the last 10, 15 years where you have robots picking up. We're gonna, I'm gonna show a video from Amazon, right? Well, most of the picking is done by the robots, right? Your small robots, your cranes picking up. Okay, I've seen in Walmart huge cranes. Okay, for bulky items they go and pick it and put it in a place, and from there. Uh, the packing and slot uh, packing and sorting start so basically the packing is mostly done by human beings because you don't want to you want to make sure that everything is right okay you don't want to leave it to the machines right even in amazon warehouses packing 99% happens by a human being right you just want to verify that okay the address is right you put the right item and you pack it and ship it whereas picking usually happens nowadays uh, with automation here I'm talking about manual where the human being going and picking. Okay, so order filling con uh, continued, right? Uh, so as I said, uh, say for example, uh, a customer had placed uh, five items, right? So a picker went and picked three items. Another went, another picker went and uh, picked up two items, right? You need to consolidate. So there will be a consolidation area in warehouse. So basically, when you pick it, it will tell go and put in consolidation area A, right? So that is for maybe customer 
some customer okay uh, so when that first picker goes and picks uh, kind of drops those three items in consolidation area a so another picker brings the another two items and he'll put it in the same slot uh, consolidation area uh, a right so that is how it is consolidated again this is complex logic right how to consolidate right uh, okay uh, next is packing so once everything is brought to the packing area so this is where you kind of print the packing slip right and do any value added services right so if somebody wanted some gift message somebody wanted some different packing right uh, somebody wanted some other value added service right any other value so for example if you want to put a hanger to a suit uh, you bought a blazer right If there is no hanger. You want to put a blazer. Sometimes VAS is done even outside of the warehouse, right? If you need to do some more value-added services, there are some third-party um, um, third-party companies which do just value-added services, right? So you want to do some special customization. So that is also part of VAS. Okay. So that is all done during packing, not before that. Okay. So this is where you kind of print the packing slip, and also the shipping label gets printed here. Uh, and that is pasted on the box outside. The packing slip usually goes inside, or usually mostly goes inside of the box, uh, where the shipping label is uh, pasted out of the box. Okay. So again, pictorial representation, right? Uh, order picking, as I said, four types: order consolidation and packing. Okay. So uh, you bring it to the consolidation shelf. This is how it looks uh, usually, and uh, this is the packing center where you do the packing. The packing, as I said, usually happens at a desktop or a touch screen by a human being. Okay. Uh, the last piece uh, of outbound uh, is shipping and invoicing. Okay. So shipping is usually done by the third-party carriers, your UPS, FedEx, right? In India, uh, India also has uh, some examples, right? Some couriers, right? So shipping is not done by usually by the uh, retailers. It is done by the third-party uh, carriers. So. so your warehouse management needs to integrate with them right so the shipping label comes from the carrier right so again the reverse process happens in uh, shipping right how you receive the opposite happens here you bring all the items to near the door put it there uh, all packed all with the labels right put it on the pallets or put it uh, by individual units right uh, the the truck of the shipping carrier company comes and it has a door also dedicated door it comes at the right time right and you kind of take those pallets put it in the trailer and the trailer leaves okay uh this is usually when uh, we call it as the product shipped right when you see on the dot com site this is where it's called shipped right now delivery is with the carrier third party carrier right and this is where usually you kind of collect payments also right you usually don't collect payments while up front right you uh, kind of uh, keep a, keep the uh, uh, you do um, Uh, you don't take the payment until you ship it. I mean, once you ship it, this is where you do the payment collection. Any questions for order filling and shipping and invoicing? So invoicing is basically this is where you invoice. This is where you uh, take money from the customer. Okay. Any questions? Doubts? How about the return scenario? Uh... is it a uh, opposite to this what yeah return is while receiving so return is part of receiving okay, okay. so customer returns right that comes as a receiving okay okay, okay. Uh, some pallet one slide on just pallet movement right so pallet movement a lot of uh, it happens in different scenarios while receiving also you need pallet movement while shipping also you need pallet movement while uh, doing replenishment from, from prime to reserve uh, reserve to prime also you need pallet movement. this is what i have tried to show in this slide okay so basically these are the receiving doors uh, and you have the shipping doors on this side so basically once the items uh, are kind of received uh, the pick slips are generated right you you kind of haul those pallets uh, from receiving door to a drop location so these are your drop locations right usually you drop it on the reserves okay uh, then another kind of pallet movement could be for moving these items from the reserves to the prime okay so there will be a forklift right um, uh, that will be there You're gonna carry this pallet from here and put it here. Okay. Uh, if you go, if anybody has visited a warehouse, you keep seeing these guys running around. I mean, taking their forklifts. They'll be moving very fast. Actually, there'll be dedicated lanes where people are not supposed to walk. In a warehouse, you need to be very, very careful when you visit the warehouse. Right? There is the de dedicated lanes where you need to walk. You cannot walk here everywhere. Okay. Because there'll be forklifts going very fast. And it could be even automated robots also running around. Right. You shouldn't walk on those areas. so there will be a dedicated place to walk and there will be a dedicated place for moving these forklifts okay uh 
so the, some retailers use something called stocking shelf. Uh, this is also a kind of reserve. So the, that's like just uh, above the prime. So you're gonna you can move it to stocking shelf also. From stocking shelf, you can move it to the prime. And uh, sometimes you do something called full pull, right? If it is a store order, right? Usually you can pull the full pallet from the reserve and put it to the consolidation area or put it to the packing area, right? Full pull happens usually for stores only. I mean, not for customer orders. Okay. Full pull, full pull is basically you're gonna pull the whole pallet and take it to the packing or consolidation area. Okay. Moving on. Uh, <clears throat> so QA activities, right? What happens in quality assurance? Uh, this is also again an important concept of a warehouse, right? You need to have it. You need to have dedicated separate team uh, to do quality assurance. Okay. So what all activities happen in quality assurance? One is inventory adjustments. Okay. Uh, because you want to have the right. The, the inventory is the inventory picture is the biggest pain for all the retailers. Okay. And uh, WMS is the main source for inventory. Okay. Because in OMS you don't have inventory. There is no other location which has physical inventory. Right, so you need to have the right picture of inventory in the warehouse, right? Otherwise, if you have a wrong picture, say, I mean, you thought that you have 100 items of an iPhone, right? Usually, but you only have 90. You either sold it or they got stolen or something happened, they got damaged, right? But if you show us 100, you're gonna play, you're gonna place order for 100 from your dot com side, and you're gonna have bad customer experience, right? You have only 90, you won't be able to fulfill all 100. So, you having a right inventory is very, very important, and WMS plays a very crucial role in that, okay? Having right inventory and where is the inventory right i mean you need to keep doing event cycle there is there is something called cycle count right uh, usually happens a uh, few times a year sometimes it happens once in a year if it is costly items usually people do once in a week as well okay if it is jewelry or if it is uh, if it is costly items like iphones ipads and all usually do once in a week and that is kept in a secure place also not open where theft and uh, lifting can happen okay so uh, inventory, again, uh, uh, re real-time inventory of visibility, that is also related to inventory, right? Making sure that you have the accurate inventory picture. That is the work of the quality assurance team, right? They usually go visit the warehouse, make sure that, right, what is supposed to be in slot A is in slot A. What sometimes what happens is that picking guys pick up something and drop it somewhere, right? They don't care about it, right? Because, yeah, it's not their job, but they should be careful, but sometimes it happens, right? You picked up something wrong, and you put it somewhere else. So this is quality assurance team needs to go and visit and make sure that that item is kept back in that place, right? So that is all done by the QA team, okay? Um, outbound audits, right? That is also done by the QA team, right? Outbound audit happens is, say you want to make sure that you're selling, the, you're sending the right product to, this is to avoid returns for uh, customer satisfaction, right? You want to make sure that you do some audits, right? Say for example, if, say thousand shipments are going out of your warehouse, you want to at least audit, say, maybe uh, 50 or 40 of them, right? You just want to randomly pick something and make sure that what the order was and what the item is going, whether it's in right condition, every the packing slip has the right information, everything, right? So outbound audits are done. Cycle counts, as I said, uh, this is, again, in the system, you can generate it. You can generate it manually. Cycle count is basically going and counting manually, physically going and counting. There are there are some companies who do cycle counts. There are dedicated companies who do cycle counts. You have to basically close the warehouse operation when you're doing the cycle count. It happens, it, it sometimes it would run for days. And sometimes it happens, well, usually they do it in night, right? Where a cycle count, and cycle count could be done for the whole warehouse. It could be done for a particular area. It could be done for a particular small area as well, okay? It could be done for particular items also, okay? So it's all again, uh, you can uh, kind of generate cycle counts in the system. Uh, reclamation, including control damage items. So reclamation is, I mean, as I said, right, some item is, uh, I mean, there are a few items which don't have uh, uh, slots, okay? You have to make sure that you they dedicate, they, they dedicate, they kind of uh, assign the proper slot, right? Reclamation is basically that such inventory which is not accounted for, but you have that inventory, right? You have to make sure that every all the inventory is accounted for. Okay, the main, main thing is inventory visibility, okay, of QA and also making sure that what you receive is right and what you ship is right. Any questions, concerns? Okay, all good before we jump on? Yes. Great, okay, I'm gonna play a video, okay, now. Uh, this is this is a little old video, but 
still pretty relevant okay let me see if i have shared the uh, this one okay more where do i now uh, i don't see the share competition okay sure so i'm going to play this video make it bigger this, this is from amazon uh, warehouse okay uh, let me know if you guys can hear the sound okay should this tactical zoom lens be made illegal in india this is that. this is the first box appears here e-commerce is a magic trick that repeats millions of times a day for a peek at what happens in between we visited its inventor this is where an amazon delivery begins a building that's one third of a mile long ordinarily it's off limits but not today Amazon opened closed doors. Steady flow. And opened my eyes. I don't think it's well understood. With a footprint equal to 59 football fields, this Amazon fulfillment center is simply mammoth. We have the packing, the picking, the slamming, the shipping, the receiving. It's home to an army of employees. A little bit over 100. One six-ton pallet-slinging robot. We affectionately call it Robo Stow and a squad of box shuffling cyborgs. We like to think of it as a symphony between robots and our great associates. We found a secret at our feet. The floor is covered in tiny QR codes. It's sort of like a chessboard. Eyes in the robots' bellies read the codes and broadcast their position. Choreography that keeps your shipment on time and avoids collisions. They know exactly where to go. Clicking that yellow button sets these robots in motion, sometimes within seconds. But your order is not handled by Android alone. The drive units, the Amazon robots, are actually bringing items from where they're stored to Associate so that Associate can pick customer orders and get them ready to ship out. A real-life human being boxes every Amazon order. As with every department, there's simply no guesswork in choosing the right box. How do I know which box to pick? Our technology will tell you. The computer tells you. The computer will tell us the perfect size box to fit that item. From there, it's time to slam it. Slam. Fortunately, slam isn't an action. Slam is an Amazon acronym for adding your address and sending your order home. Scan, label, apply, manifest. Orders are constant. Uh, we process thousands and thousands of packages. The exact number is confidential, but we do know that Amazon sales hit a record, $88 billion in 2014. Driven by new same-day delivery and selection that no other retailer can touch. You can't fathom the amount of inventory that we have in the building. It looks like a lot, and it is. Amazon says those shelves are home to one million different items. One million. Do you think the typical customer realizes that? Probably not. We even spotted a toilet in stock. You name it, we have it. Chaos and a supersonic conveyor are what we expected. Manager Chris Monnet explained that speed isn't everything. The important thing is just the flow. Order levels fluctuate, and yes, there are rush hours. Yet Amazon says its software regulates the line to maintain a steady pace. In order to have one million unique items in this facility, you have to be able to do that. As gaping, gargantuan, gigantic as this fulfillment center is, it's not alone. We have 109 fulfillment centers worldwide. Locally, 59 football fields probably isn't enough either. Our tour guides hinted at expansion, though they wouldn't touch the drone thing. We did build this facility with room to grow. Um, so stay tuned. Amazon has taken heat for claims of harsh conditions at its warehouses. Perhaps that's why it granted us access behind the locked gates and let us interview Diane Ortiz. I'm happy to have you guys. She recently joined Amazon. Diane works 10 hour days, four days a week. Okay, that's pretty good enough. You guys got some idea of what we covered? Hello? You people can hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you. And yes, we can hear you. saw the video? Everybody saw the video, right? Yes, we could see the video. 
okay okay i think some of you might have seen it already but it's a little old but it at least gives you an idea of i mean how big is warehouse is right what all happens right there is there is mhe material handling equipment right that is not human that's all uh, you'll have conveyor belts right where the picking happens and they just drop it on the belt and that belt go i mean if somebody has gone to our airport also right you might have seen a small conveyor belt right where you drop your luggage it goes and if there is a problem with any of the bag it goes to a different location it gets diverted and goes to a different location whereas there is no problem with the bag it goes to the right location where you can just take the bag and go off right so that is how a conveyor belt is right it it tells where it needs to be dropped right so if you have a conveyor that is running and uh, if something needs to be dropped to a different location it just pushes that to that location so that's a conveyor belt okay okay uh, so this is uh, this is in this slide what we are trying to tell is uh, so wms needs to interact with lot of other applications lot of third party applications so here we have shown at high level right what all applications that it interacts with okay what you see in the center is a core wms functionality that we almost covered right inbound receiving sorting and put away right order processing picking packing shipping and manifesting returns management i think somebody asked that question basically returns is uh, returns is done a little differently than normal receiving right because you're going to get it in mostly single item packs right it could be single items but you need to receive that right as a receiving and you need to decide on whether the product you need to do quality check for that right if it is some electronic item probably you want to do the checking right and if everything is fine you need to pay back the customer right if something is wrong probably you're going to take some money out of customer right or if you want to take the shipping cost probably you can deduct that during that time right so that is what is returns management okay uh inventory control we covered that cross docking is probably something i didn't cover so there is there is separate kind of warehouse uh, it's called cross docking where usually you uh, what happens is you have a warehouse uh these are usually smaller warehouses compared to the normal warehouses where you get inventory from different um, vendors kind of mix and match that and send it to your stores or it could be even customers okay so in cross docking usually you don't store inventory very rarely you do maybe small amount of it so you just receive it say for example item a b c is coming from uh, three different vendors right but you want to send those three items to your store so you get it to this warehouse club all those items and send it to the store directly you don't store that inventory in the warehouse that's called cross docking so get the inventory uh, mix and match and uh, i mean create whatever what you need for a particular store or a particular uh, customer and send it directly you usually don't store that's called cross docking okay so on the left side um, so you have yard management okay yard management is uh, as i said right that scheduling that coming of truck right coming of what time right so all of that uh, is done in the yard management okay it's a separate application usually not done by wms so you're going to integrate with yard management okay this usually tells how many uh, trucks are going to come on a particular day how many doors you have how can you assign all of that that happens in the yard management okay uh, labor management um, some some wmss have it some wms don't have extensive labor management it's very very important that you have a good labor management to improve operation if operational efficiency right it's very important that you have the right uh, i mean right amount of employees working in a warehouse and they are healthy they are doing so i have seen i gone to a walmart warehouse where they do uh, free up exercise before they do picking because they usually uh, okay have to lift heavy items right i um, mean it could be grocery but they have to pick maybe say 10 kilo 5, 15 kilo of packages okay so they usually do free up exercise before they start picking so there the team kind of uh stands in a circle do some exercise before they start picking right so the lot of labor management is not easy right how do you manage the leaves how do you manage the salaries everything so that is also usually done outside of the warehouse okay uh carrier integration uh our tms transport management system right so this is uh usually done out of the warehouse out of the wms because this is third party uh, integration right so usually there are some integrators right uh which kind of uh the, we're going to cover those some examples i think something like scan data pro ship so which have uh, they they are called uh, uh, carrier shippers okay they they kind of uh, once you have a package so you're going to send a request to them and they will decide which carrier to choose whether it's ups fedex or it could be some local carrier right they're going to tell you which is the cheapest carrier to carry this in the amount of time you want to but in the next day which is the cheapest and best carrier that can deliver it next day okay so that is done by the carrier integrator 
So on the right side, this is usually done within the warehouse, but again, not core WMS functionality. Slot optimization, right? As I said, which item needs to go where, right? I mean, Manhattan has it, and some of the uh, package solutions do have it. But again, uh, there are some uh, kind of uh, uh, specific companies who do this work. Okay, slot optimization. How does my warehouse area look like, right? Which item needs to go where? How much quantity to maintain, and all of that is uh, not not how much quantity. Which item needs to go where? Okay, that is slot optimization, so that your picking slots are easy and picking is easy. Okay. uh mhe material handling equipment so all of those robots right all of those uh, uh uh cranes big cranes all of that is mhe right wms needs to integrate with it right for example say uh, you generated a pick right you want a mhe to come and do that picking right so all that it needs to talk to that system okay wms need to talk to the system and voice picking is also not usually a wms function it is a third party application that it needs to integrate with any questions people who have worked on i mean for others it might be a little new right people who have worked on wms any other application that you can think of that is not covered here i this I mean, this is not all the application i'm not telling but at least at high level we have tried to cover still there everybody sab so gaye kya no it's good no you can push it very attentive <laughs> no alhamdulillah so for you in in one hour you try to complete a lot of things alhamdulillah yeah yeah sure so uh, these are some solution options right what are applications you see is what we have tried to cover wms right uh, i mean build so as somebody said right somebody using 20 year old wms i'm not surprised walmart used to use 30 year old wms before we built a custom wms for them okay so usually it's very difficult to change a wms okay uh, because it takes a lot of time i mean what i worked on wms for walmart was a two year project with 3000 requirements okay 3000 requirements and while i was i was the qa manager at the time we got 5000 defects in the application okay so it is not easy to uh, i mean build a wms right so usually people don't uh, kind of change it for long right so mostly people go for package solution unless unless rent to somebody like walmart and big retailers right who can spend a lot of money because building custom wms is also not easy right not many people have this capability right only very big players right we're going to see that also in the gartner report later right very big companies work on wms okay maybe if it is a small i mean one warehouse right where you have very few items probably do people do build custom small uh, micro service based maybe wms now people have started building it but building a wms is not easy so people usually go with package solutions okay so mostly used is manhattan but it's very costly another one that's be used now is jda is now it's renamed as blue yonder right this jda wms uh, ibm also is suggested ibm had a wms sterling wms but they kind of stopped it few years back their oms is very famous number one famous number one oms in the world but wms number one is manhattan okay now uh, sterling is uh, so basically ibm is suggesting to use uh, jda for that new customers okay any customer want they they kind of uh, prefer they, they kind of tell them to use uh, jda that's called blue yonder now okay uh, corber okay that's another it's also called high jump okay that's another famous wms there are like 7 8 or 10 uh, wms we just try to cover three here top three i would say right so these are the top 3 wms that uh, you can use okay uh, and it has most of the thing that you need in a uh, wms but there will be some cost because every retailer or every person using a wms will have some unique things that you still have to customize okay but customizing in a manhattan is very very costly affair okay if you need to customize they're going to charge you a lot okay because it's a package solution and nobody else has access to their uh, code code okay uh, yard management uh, famous ones are ct c3 solutions uh, exotrack and pink okay uh, so basically what is the key concern is visibility on yard assets right how I many how many doors you have and what how much area do you have in the yard okay uh, and the optimization of the trailer flow from gate to gate okay uh, automation of yard driver task assignment so that is all done by the yard management slot optimization as i said manhattan has it uh, it's pretty good actually Uh, and opticity is another uh, uh, company that uh, does slot optimization okay uh, wcs warehouse control system uh, nap uh, i don't want to 
Daifukus, Skafer, Dematic, Honeywell. So these are some of the famous uh, WCS systems. Okay. Uh, labor management. So SAP is there, Workday is there, Kronos. Uh, so those are very famous labor management system that are that will that are used in the WMS. Okay. Where are this? Uh, career integrator, right? Uh, so these are third-party career integrators. Scan data is very famous, used by Walmart, ProShip. A lot of uh, retailers use ProShip. Uh, not only for warehouse, even for store. If you are shipping from the store, you need to have a career integration from the store as well. Pitney Bowes, Shiphawk. So these are the famous career integrators. So basically, what they have is, as I said, once you have a package ready, so it will tell which is the cheapest uh, carrier that can pick it. Okay, basically they they called rate shoppers. I also call it rate shoppers. So you have a package. You tell them that I have a package of say quantity, uh, so say size uh, twelve into twelve inches, right? And you say that its weight is say five kilo. So it's gonna go and do analysis and get you the cheapest uh, shipper that can do the shipping. Okay. Uh, the next is transport management system TMS. Uh, again, very 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 similar to your uh, carrier integrator. Okay, so Blue Ander, uh, Oracle, SAP, and Manhattan also has SAP and Manhattan has that capability. Okay, any questions? So this, this is the Gartner report that tells who are the top WMS players. Okay, uh, last years. So definitely Manhattan is on the top. Uh, JDA is the uh, Corber, uh, Oracle, SAP, Infor. In these are some of the top players. Okay. Uh, TMS report again. Oracle, Blue Ander is on the top. MA, Manhattan Associates is also there. Not I mean, TMS is not uh, Manhattan is not very famous for TMS. So Oracle and Blue Ander are pretty famous for this. With that, we come to the end of the session. Okay. Any questions you people have on anything in the WMS or OMS as well? I, uh... We have one question in the chat if you want to. Oh, we do? Okay. Chat, uh, 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 uh. where do we see the chat? Can somebody read it? Sorry. Yeah, can I read it out? Uh, yeah. It's from Muhammad Fahad. Would like to know the workflow for warehouse. My understanding is it comes from vendor to product items to inventory to move to warehouse. Uh, and my question is when the items or products move from warehouse to customer or return, where is it is going to update the inventory based on the invoice of the inventory will be adjusted? Yeah, so basically it happens during packing and shipping, right? So, so while receiving, uh, so for example, say, let's take an example of a football, right? Say you had uh, 50 footballs in the warehouse already and you created a purchase order for another 50 footballs, okay? And assume that that vendor had all 50 footballs and it sent you that 50 footballs. So while receiving, once you receive it, you update the inventory to 100 now. So I have now 100 footballs and you give that inventory picture to usually OMS or sometimes directly warehouse gives inventory picture to your dot com or selling channels. Usually it goes through OMS. So you publish something called full sync and delta sync from the, I'm talking a little more technical here. There is something called inventory update that goes from warehouse to the order management system. So there are delta syncs and full syncs. So delta sync is as soon as you get that inventory, you send that delta sync update that I received 50 more. So now I have 100 footballs, right? So full sync also goes at the end of the day or end of the week, right? That again, you're going to send that based on how much you have at the end of the day. Say, for example, you had 100 footballs, you sold 10 footballs in a day, right? You kind of ship 10 footballs. So you're going to send that inventory as 90 to the warehouse at the end of the day. So delta also goes that I sold 10. So while packing and shipping, you so as I said, you had 100 footballs now. So you got orders for 10 quantity in that day, okay? As you kind of start shipping, so it becomes 99, 98, right? If you sell all 10, so it becomes 90. So while shipping, that is when you kind of reduce your inventory, adjust your inventory and send that picture to the selling channels. Did I answer that? Is that was the question? Who is asking the question? Can they speak? Yeah, assalamu alaikum. This is Fahadi here. Ati. Wa alaikum assalam, Fahadi. Yeah, did you get that? Did I answer it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clear. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
actually i am implementing this inventory and uh, something okay application so yeah yeah process. yeah inventory is very very important as i said that is the biggest pain point for almost everybody if that you don't have the right inventory picture actually i have one more question related to database just i would like to ask you yeah. actually i am creating one table to get all the invoices and uh, this one uh, inventory so in one table it is good or uh, not good just i want to know i think you should have I multiple could... tables swad bhai because it having that in one table you could have performance issues as well as having that uh, too much information in one table is going to be difficult to maintain as well right you might have performance issues also because you're trying to do multiple process on that same table right it's better to have separate for receiving separate for shipping uh, right and then you can have one inventory table that gets updated after this process are done that's what is my suggestion i'm not a very technical person probably we can discuss separately i can probably suggest you a few things but i'm not very very technical <laughs> so yeah but i would okay. suggest to have separate i mean just to avoid uh, right locking right and performance issues because if you have multiple uh, transactions running on the same table it's difficult right yeah 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 okay, okay. okay. thank you yeah, shamsmi this is riyaz here uh this is about uh, warehouse management but uh, how, if i have to put it uh, i don't know how to put it but uh, uh, what are the career opportunities in wms uh, if someone wants to go to wms he's a fresher or he's an experienced person what is that we look for a person if you, if you are hiring a person to wms or like to walmart for warehouse management what is that you look for a person look in a person's resume or what is it yeah good question right so this is part of supply chain and supply chain is a huge area it's a ocean basically right uh, so i mean having experience is really really i would say needed i mean if you have worked on at least one implementation you will have a higher chance of getting a job okay but if you are not worked on uh it is little difficult i would say right so if you are a hardcore tech person if you know coding in java dot net i mean whatever right now microservices or uh, ui any of the ui technologies you probably could land a job easily still okay because that time your skill is tech right but if you are a functional person if you are kind of product person right then you need to have knowledge already right i mean not having worked in that experienced person trying to get a get into wms is going to be difficult but if you have worked on at least similar applications right if you have worked on oms right or if you have worked on tms if you have worked on some other, some of the other application that i showed here right then it could be probably easier for example if you worked on yard management labor could not be related right now if you have worked on career integration right any of these it might be easier for you to move to wms right but if you are not worked on it and if you are a functional person it's going to be difficult i would say so what is like the basic uh, background technical requirements for a person to get hired like uh i mean see as i said mostly nowadays see earlier we used to have package solutions right uh, mm-hmm. uh so manhattan is there i mean if you have worked on it you can get it easily right but now nowadays everything is being built in microservices okay almost everything right i mean uh it's microservices um and especially spring boot right is for microservices use for right if you have if you know any of these technologies um you can get into any building any application right it doesn't matter what application you're building if you're good at these technologies i would say you can get into it i mean and it doesn't really matter right if you know this technology you can do anything right mm-hmm. okay That's what so i um, mean i mean if you know uh, do you know what are the back end uh, softwares that are being used for example like from a um, database perspective is it like uh, oracle database or postgres or like any other no sql database or what yeah, kind see, of database see, uh, yeah sterling used to as oracle i think manhattan also uses right so those old package solutions right uh, used to use this old uh, w- dbms right now it's all mango db all the no sql dbs right so all the mm-hmm. all the microservices are using the no sql dbs mostly the new db new db new, new uh, database data databases not database yeah okay mostly no sql nowadays yeah sure thanks sounds right thank you yeah 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 any other questions 
anything you can you can always reach out to me okay if there are any questions if you need some suggestion any discussion yeah uh, shams bhai uh, this is uh, khalandar here and uh, so i think my my thoughts is like the transport management and veros is uh, is one of the one of the key skills together it it, it lends you a good job so in this uh, current scenario after the after the pandemic oh, COVID, i think yeah. uh, these mm-hmm. things have got a lot of importance like the warehouse management plus the transport management irrespective of uh, uh, and whatever the uh, technology or the application you are using it can be sap one or sterling one or oracle whatever it is but these two combinations are uh, playing a key role after pandemic and there is a lot of uh, job openings but again with respect to the uh, uh, the background the people have already have they have exposure to scm are they already worked as technical people something related to warehouse so uh, yeah. that's my take yeah yeah that's true i mean after covid i think wms especially has a whole of supply chain basically right it has a lot of focus people are spending a lot of money people are building new era as new wms people are building customer custom wms earlier they used to go mostly with the package solutions but now a lot of even service based companies are helping clients build uh, custom solutions okay people are spending a lot of money on this because it's very important that you have a good wms right because you mostly it's going to be online i think maybe another one year people will not come to stores as they used to come before anyway that the the, the traffic to stores has been declining from last 10 years in us as well right people don't want to go to stores people want to buy online so with that having a good wms or having the capability of stores to kind of ship products that is also very similar to wms as a small wms i would say right because you still do pick pack and ship even in a store so having a good wms is needed there also i mean it could be even omas playing that role but that capability still remains the same yeah there are there are some certifications also for supply chain right if somebody is really interested uh, i can one of my friend has done uh, they are very good i mean little costly but if you do that there is a lot of value the supply chain independent uh, organization kind of has come up with a supply chain certification level 1 and level 2 right if somebody has already been in this area for some time you can do that they are pretty good little costlier but i think doing that is like doing almost doing like a mba in supply chain and there are mbas in supply chain as well <laughs> what is the course name uh, i i you? usually i i don't have it on my top of my mind i can give it to you okay one of my friend has done so from my company only i'll give you that exact uh, name i'll who is that just ping me okay ping me on uh, linkedin or uh, i can give it back give it back to you uh, shams bhai it will be help, help, very helpful for everyone if you can share your contact details in the chat chat box so that uh, Uh, other solve uh, okay. yeah sure uh, where is that i don't know why am i you can there? click on that uh, top the uh, you are viewing shams screen right there is on the top there should be yeah view options you will see a chat button <clears throat> yeah more i'm surprised that I'm like, i have one more question yeah yeah go ahead go ahead yeah. who is that yeah i actually i have good experience in this invoice type application like the gst and everything Mm-hmm. also have inventory so if i develop this warehouse management system with my application how could be the in future means it will be good or bad just i need your suggestion like that see i mean you can build it right but getting the client is also not i mean see usually people prefer uh, kind of uh, known names right known companies right i mean you can build yes. it right uh, but i mean, probably you can start with small clients here that you people uh, i mean anybody you know right you can but if you can make it big definitely why not yes. but you can start with small right uh, but getting client is not not that easy right if you know somebody who is wanting to do it and you start with them right maybe one person cannot build it definitely it's a huge application right probably you need some support as well but if you can do it yeah do it i mean there's nothing like i mean if you can make it i mean if some people start using it and if they like it and if you can sell it to more people pretty good okay. but any uh, any application is like that right yeah okay. but get, getting the clients is not that easy yeah because people usually don't prefer smaller um, smaller vendors in the wms area lot, lot at stake right so <laughs> 
So warehouse only can be used by big application, big companies like that. No, no, I'm not telling that way, right? What I'm telling is, right? Uh, I mean, bigger companies usually prefer bigger partners only, right? For AWS. So if you, if you are, if you are, for example, if you are a small uh, warehouse which is maybe serving some uh, medical shops, right? Probably that those kind of things you can kind of work with them and build a them. Even they also need AWS, right? So probably smaller, uh, smaller players. Yes, you can do it. Okay. 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 I don't. Uh, somebody can type my number. Okay, nine double eight six. I'm not able to see my nine double eight six one zero eight two one eight nine double eight six one zero eight two one eight. That's my number. Talk, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I'm not seeing. Maybe I'm sharing. That's why I'm not seeing is it. Maybe I'll stop sharing and. See, okay, if I can see the chat. Yeah, yeah now I can see the chat. Probably we are scaling, right? That's why. Uh, yeah, that's my uh, number, and you can reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. Any, anyway, it's fine. Now you can WhatsApp me. Uh, any other so question? Just, uh, also, looking into using blockchain in WMS solutions. Yeah, some people are trying it. I mean, yeah, I definitely, I think there are a lot of new uh, developments that are happening. Uh, but I haven't seen at least the, the package solutions using it as of now. But I think any custom things, they can use it. Any, if somebody is building custom, right? Yeah, there are a few blockchain experts mm -hmm. who can help if you are looking out for this kind of collaboration. Okay, sure, sure. So somebody actually from KSA reached out to me yesterday night about a I'm not sure if that person is there on this uh, call, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is Amjad. Yeah. From KSA. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know uh, if I have reached you, but yes, I, I did some chat, I believe. No, this Fayaz Ahmad is he on the call? Is uh huh. Oh, is that you? Somebody called Fayaz. No, no, I'm Amjad. Okay, okay. Somebody called Fayaz Ahmad actually reached out to me yesterday night only. Talking about is there any WMS? Yeah. So, okay, sure. Maybe he's not on the call. Any other questions before we wrap? Okay, any last questions? So, uh, how does warehouse, uh, I mean, in a whole of. Uh, um, uh, I'm forgetting that term. Um, supply chain, is it? Supply chain, yeah. Yeah. Where does yeah. this whole? <laughs> it's, I would say it's the backbone of supply chain, actually, right? So, I mean, you might have great vendors, you might have great transport management system, you might have great everything, but if you don't have a good WMS application where you kind of uh, optimize your operations, optimize your inventory flow, right? So, WMS is the backbone of supply chain. As OMS mm -hmm. is a backbone of fulfillment, uh, right? Order, order, orch order orchestration. Right uh, and inventory management that is done by OMS mostly, but uh, for the whole of supply chain, WMS is a backbone. I would say because this is okay. where the single point where you get the inventory and move the inventory out of uh, in the customer's hands. Right, okay. it's it's a very very important uh, um, aspect of supply chain. Right, call it as backbone. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Hansby. You have shared really good information today. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Okay. Thank Shams, you. Uh, Shams, 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 is this uh, session recorded or something? Can we can we have a copy of this if it is recorded? Yeah, it is recorded. Yes. In, in the chat, I have uh, shared the URL where all uh, this will be shared uh, in a couple of days, and all the previous recordings also you can browse at that uh, link. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we are highly obliged to Shams, Shams Bhai for taking out his time on a Sunday and sharing his vast knowledge and experience with us. And thanks to all the participants as well for making this a uh, interactive and lively session. So inshallah, we'll keep on having uh, such regular webinars uh, every weekend, inshallah. So I would request uh, all of you to keep participating, bring your friends, relatives also, so that they can also gain some of the knowledge from experts that we have and in case you are also interested in sharing your knowledge uh, through this 
uh, by this uh, webinars, then please feel free to reach out to anyone in the team and we can help you facilitate that. So any other remarks uh, from someone? Well, thanks for uh, organizing this and uh, thanks to all your team members and also Shams Bhai. Alhamdulillah, it was a good uh, interactive session. Yeah. yeah Mashallah. Okay, Shams Bhai, thanks a lot. And Thank Jazakum you, Sahib, for providing me an opportunity to do this. And we, we look forward to hearing more from you. Sure, sure. <laughs> I said, okay. let's see how this goes and then you can decide. <laughs> when, when perfect. Okay. Be better than an Amazon warehouse. Okay, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.